Hey, how you doing, Facebook Live family? This is Brother Leon. I am down here at 2300 West 4th Street at Major Books. You can come on down and see me. We're getting ready to go into um, what I told you what we were going to go into about what is your marriage and what is the name over it. So I'm going to be ministering from the book, Let No Man Put Asunder. And this is actually the first chapter in the book it talks about what is your marriage. So um, if you get a chance, if you can't come down here, you can pick it up online at Amazon, and we also have the Kindle version. So um, I just want to start out with prayer before we go into this little lesson. It's not going to be long. It's just going to be quick and short. All right. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We ask that you just bless this time. We ask, Lord God, that you bless the listeners, bless their relationships, bless their marriages. If they are experiencing anything, Lord God, that is not like you, that is not in your perfect will, we ask, Lord God, that you give them the knowledge, that you give them the spirit and the strength, Lord God, to overcome the seasons of life. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this time and for this season. And I just decree the blessing over all of these watchers, over all these listeners, over all the readers. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, let's get with it. I'm going to start from the book, Let No Man Put Asunder. What is my marriage? Marriage is a gift from God. It is carried out upon the earth between two human beings. It is an imperfect earthly institution that gives perfect moments in life. It is a covenant between two people made before the witnesses and the presence of God, angels, demons, and people. So that's the one thing that I want you to see about marriage is that when you get engaged, when you ask a person to marry you, what you're asking is, I want you to come into covenant with me. And so a lot of people get it twisted. They think that, you know, the wedding day is actually what the marriage is going to be like. No, it is not. I'm going to tell you from the door. Your wedding day is just a declaration of the covenant that you have made with a person. And the way that you know that you are making the right type of covenant with a person, I'm going to say this, I'm going to run off on this little rabbit trail, is that the Bible does say that marriage is honorable in all and that it is, marry, it is better to marry than to burn. But you also have to check what is the motive behind getting married or wanting to be married. Because here, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you, were just, if you were just getting married just for sex, yo, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have some problems. Because if you up here are fornicating and, and you're fi uh, thinking that, okay, I can solve this one problem by getting married, you don't solve one problem, but you want to open up a can of worms to 10 other problems. Because the one thing about marriage is that you have to develop trust in the dating stage. And I put up a Facebook post a while back stating that you don't marry to trust. When you are dating, that is where you develop the trust stage. And you just can't give it. You let a person earn that trust. And so when you get married, you do it before the witnesses of God. You do it before the witnesses of people, those who you invite. So I'm going to tell you right now, when you invite people to your wedding, don't just invite family, but invite those who you know that have your back, those who are going to pray for you, those who are going to be in a position to stand in the gap. Because with marriage, you have trials and seasons of life. Trials and seasons of life that will test you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you will be tested on every vow that you make for better, for worse, richer and poor, sickness and in health, forsaking all others. You are going to be tested in that. And the, and the crazy thing about it is that you can be born again, but being born again does not exempt you from the problems of life, whether you're married or you're single. I want you to get that straight. It does not exempt you from the problems of life. We have faith. We have the word of God to take and get us over the trials. We overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. The word of our testimony is not only what comes out of our mouth, but what comes out of our actions when, you, when we are in the trenches of life. So I want to tell you right now that marriage is not just spiritual. Marriage is not just solical. Marriage is work. Marriage is physical work that you have to put in. So if you want the blessing to be in your house, you have to operate in faith. But faith without works is dead. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you want love to come into your house, 
Not only do you have to choose love, you have to be a person who's not going to give in to just the emotional side of it. You have to be a person who is willing to do the work to have love come into your house. You're going to have to do those little things. You may have to watch a chick flick. You may have to watch a, a, a action flick. You may have to pick up a joystick. You may have to go out here and do some things that are going to cultivate the openness with your spouse. Because that's how, that, that's how you start to connect when you begin to be open to one another. When you accept each other's flaws. Because the one thing about marriage is that everybody comes with a past. It's an imperfect institution that God gives. But the people who are in it, who make the covenant, they are imperfect people. But it can give you perfect moments. Marriage can give you perfect moments. You know, the moment that you say I do, that can be a perfect moment. The moment that you enter into that covenant, that is the perfect moment. And the one thing I want to tell you right now is that marriage is like a seed. Marriage is like a seed and then it goes into the ground. And the one thing about seeds is that the pressure of life comes, the heat of life comes, and that seed explodes. But it also has to be cultivated so it can bring forth a harvest, so that it can bring forth a fruit, so that it can bring forth a tree which has roots, which can bring forth a generation, which can bring forth a family tree, a family legacy. That's what marriage is about. Marriage is about family. Marriage is about legacy and the type of legacy that you want to leave to your children, the type of legacy that you want to leave upon the earth. And also with it comes a name that is over your house, the name that is over your marriage. Now you might be Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, but what is the name over you? You know, has life given you a label? Has the past given you a label? Because I know sometimes when you come together, people be like, oh my gosh, she marrying so-and-so? Oh, yo, man, he marrying so-and-so. Yo, dog, I heard about her. And the crazy thing about it is that a lot of times people, they just know you from your past, but they don't know what God is doing with you. They don't know what God has done, and they're not going to definitely know what God, what God is taking you in the future. So you cannot focus upon what people are saying. The biggest thing that I say in this book is that you cannot allow opinions of others. You cannot allow the convictions of others. You cannot allow the theology of others to come into your house and to wreck it. I don't care if they're preacher. I don't care if they're friends. I don't care if they're relatives. I don't even care if they're your mama and papa. I don't even care if they big mama and them. You can't allow it. Especially if you and your husband have something or you and your wife have something that is working for you. Because a lot of times some people come with myths. Some people come with stuff and junk that are sent by the devil to just mess stuff up. And sometimes you get counsel from people who ain't even in where you in. You get wrong counsel from people who are trying to tell you what's right and what's wrong in your marriage and they ain't even got a man or they ain't even got a woman or they out here running all types of men and women got a sugar daddy on Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday but yet want to tell you what's right and what's wrong so I'm going to tell you right now that you're going to have to silence those voices when I did that video on the fifth column those are things that can come in and undermine your marriage those are the things that can come in and take away the surrounding support or the surrounding footage around the pillars that are holding up your marriage. You don't need anything that's going to cause erosion in your house. You don't need anything that's going to take and devastate the, the covering that is over your house. Because with marriage, you have covenant. And with covenant, you have a covering. And when you take and, and allow things to come in, when you take and allow opinions, when you take and allow the past, or you take and allow sin to come in, you are damaging the covering. You are ripping apart the covering, a part of the covenant. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, yo, the grass is not greener on the other side. And you may think in the trials of life, in the heat of life right now, yo, I will be better off with another person. No, because the same way that you're going to have to work that you're gonna to have to work with the person that you with right now, you're gonna to have to do that type of work with a new person. So I'm gonna tell you right now, yo, it is better to do the work with the person that you are right now. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna be transparent. My wife know my crazy. 
she can she can handle me and i'm gonna tell you right now it took a minute for me to be open to be totally transparent with her totally transparent but the one thing i will say is that it was worth it at the end of the day it was worth it because i look back now and and i see i'm like i don't know if i'm gonna do that with anybody else I'm serious. I don't know if I want. I don't know if I want to put in that type of work with anybody else, because it took a minute to get where I am. I'm serious. I had to do a lot of prayer. I had to do a lot of uh, self-reflection. But the one thing about the Lord is that He is gracious and that He is patient, and He was patient with me during that time. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this. When I when I right before I got engaged with my wife, I told her everything about my life. Now I'm gonna tell you right now. Looking back now, I was like, whoa, that was so scary. <laughs> I'm serious. That was so scary. Because, you know, what if she would have told me no? Or what if she would have told me, you know, I don't want to deal with you. But she accepted me as I was. And I'm not going to lie. At that time, I was broken. I was broken. I had a whole lot of stuff happen to me. And maybe one day, I will tell you all the stuff that I've endured, you know, to bring me here. And even the things with with uh, with the book, let no man put asunder. Um, she accepted me because I felt like that in order for her to give me a real answer, I had to be transparent with her, and she had to have the right to choose. Because a lot of times we we get caught up by people, and we don't know the whole truth. And getting back to my point on the motive in marriage, you got to know the whole truth. When you, when you are engaged or when you are dating, you have to know the whole truth. And so I'm gonna tell you right now, people come with game, people come with a mask, but you cannot allow that mask and you cannot even allow your own imagination to take and blind you from the reality. You gotta learn to ask the hard questions in the hard seasons. You have to learn how to do that. You have to learn how to ask those hard questions. Start asking questions about finance. Start asking questions about sex. Start asking questions about past history because I'm gonna tell you right now, the only thing that we are concerned about right now is whether they got good credit and sexual history, but there is more to a person in life than just good credit and sexual history. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, a person can have good credit and they can have you know, not that much sexual history, but they got a temper that goes from zero to 60 and they come from abuse. And you won't even know it because you were only focused on one thing. So that's what I want to say, you know, during that dating time, during that dating time, you have to ask the hard questions because here it is. You have not because you ask not. You have no truth because you haven't asked that person in truth about their truth, about their life. See what they're like under pressure. See what they like around their family. See if they have any issues in life that they need deliverance from, that they need prayer from. And I'm not trying to say that, you know, that, you know, makes them a bad person. But I just want you to know that when you say yes, or when you say I do, you are saying to every part of them, their family, you can't, you can't marry a person that not marry a family. Trust and believe. What comes with them is what comes with them. You're going to get all them cousins. You're going to get his mom, his dad, you want you gonna get her mom, her dad. So you can't have one without the other. The Bible does say a man shall leave his his, his shall leave his mother and cleave unto his own wife. I'm just paraphrasing it. But what I'm trying to tell you, even though you may be living someplace, that don't mean the ties are totally cut. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you that right now. The ties will not be totally cut. So you're gonna have to make up in your mind, okay looking at this family, you know, looking at the history, looking at where we are, can I build with this person? Can we establish a love together? Can we establish trust together? And so if you can, that is the good motive on getting married. But trust and believe with every choice that you make, there comes a consequence. You can lie to yourself, you can lie to everybody out here, but you can't lie to consequence. Seriously, you cannot lie to consequence. And getting back to the book, marriage comes with baggage, hurts, and always a past. It comes with these things because we as people always have past history. In those history on both sides, husbands and wives, we have lessons learned, and those lessons learned enter into our hearts 
and we need healing from the negative lessons learned and we need retraining to unlearn and relearn again. Openness and forgiveness are the keys to longevity in marriage. You wanna know how people stay together for 30 some years, 20 some years? It's because they learned the art of forgiveness and they learned the art of being open. And so what I wanna tell you is that when it comes to the name over your house, you have to be willing to forgive yourself. You have to be willing to be open to God. And you can't allow yourself to just say, you know what, I'm going to block that out or I'm going to just stay numb to that because I'm going to tell you right now, God, he is a God of healing. Numbness is not healing. The one thing that, they, that people always say that time heals all wounds. No, it doesn't. If anything, it makes things worse. And if anything, it intensifies the memories behind that pain. So I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to allow yourself to be healed. God is trying to give you a new name. God is trying to give you a new identity. But you're going to have to come to the place where, number one, you can forgive yourself. Number two, you can forgive the other people. And number three, the hardest thing about forgiveness is that you have to begin to bless them. And what I mean by bless them is just ask the Lord, you know, Lord, bless them. That's, that's how I came to freedom. I had to ask, you know, people did wrong by me. I forgave them. I forgave myself. But I also ask the Lord to bless them. Because when you're able to bless those who have wronged you, you are on your way to a road of freedom that nobody can take you off of. And you will not be caught up in your mind. You will not be caught up in the flashbacks of the past. And you can look at that person and say, yeah, they wronged me. And you can also say to the devil, the prince of this world came and they tried to destroy you, but they ain't got nothing in you. And that's what God wants to do for you. I want to give you a scripture out of Isaiah. It comes from Isaiah chapter 62. It says that thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. So what I want to pronounce over you is that God has given you newness of life. You can have newness in your heart. You can have newness in your home. You can have newness in your marriage. But you have to come to the Lord. You have to come to him and you have to be like, all right, Lord, I'm willing to be open with you. I ask that you forgive me. And even if you're mad at God, God can take that. He can take you being mad at him, but he just wants you to come to him. He wants you to talk to him, talk to him, vent, whatever it takes, talk to him so that he can begin to talk to you and show you out of the way of darkness. Because the one thing that I want you to see is that where there is ignorance, there is darkness. And where there is darkness, the enemy can prevail. And so the one thing that you want in your life, the one thing that you want in your home, is that you want to be able to have light so that you can see what your marriage is. So that you can see that even though she is different and even though I am different, that doesn't mean that God has not brought us together. That doesn't mean that, you know, that the enemy has risen up. We might have these little quirks that we're trying to work through, but God can work us out. God can help us to get to the place that we need to be, but we cannot allow ourselves to give up. And so you have to make up in your mind that I am willing to be open with my spouse. I am willing to be open and I'm willing to forgive. Because I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes you are going to have to have what is called redemptive love. And that love can't be based on just, okay, long as she loves me, I'm going to do this, this, and this. No, you need to love in spite of. Because the Bible says husbands love your wives. But we're supposed to love each other. And so, you know, the one thing that I, I want you to see is that you're going to have to get to the place where you have the attitude, am I willing to give up my right of being right to get the issue fixed? Because a lot of times we are so bent on trying to prove the point or we are so bent on the principle behind it. And it's just little stuff. And it's the little stuff that comes in that spools the vine and wrecks the marriage. And then there we go. We done internalize a whole lot of stuff. And then one day, you find yourself breaking up over a pair of socks. Or you find yourself breaking up because you got tired of him drinking out of the milk carton. Or you got tired of her, you know, she knows she got a problem with dairy, but she don't want to leave the macaroni and cheese alone. And she farting all over the place. And you just got tired of it. 
So I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna have to get to the place where you're gonna have to work through those issues. And you have to ask yourself, is it, is it, is it worth me breaking up my home because of this? Is it? Is it, is it really worth breaking up my home over this? And so that is why we need the Lord to come through and to do things with us. And sometimes you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to say, yo, it ain't that serious. It ain't that serious. Because what is it gonna to take to get this issue fixed? Yo, if it takes, if it takes, you know, making sure that, okay, let me make sure we got some Febreze. Let me make sure that we got some non-lactate dairy stuff so when she goes messing with that macaroni and cheese, I make sure I make it this way. Or we start doing uh, vegetarian macaroni and cheese. I'm just giving you an analogy. But we find things. God will give us ideas. He will give us opportunities. He will open doors for us that will bring solutions. So I want to tell you, you know, allow God to come through so that you can know what your marriage is. So that you can know what your relationship is. And I want you to come on down. I'm going to be here for a while. But I just want you to know that we came from the book, Let No Man Put Asunder. And the first chapter that we did today is, what is your marriage? I just want to tell you that even though you may have an imperfect marriage, God can give you perfect moments. And your marriage is a gift. You be the change maker. You be the miracle worker. You be the miracle. You be the one that declares what thus saith the Lord. Because the Bible says that thou shalt decree a thing and it will be established unto you, then the light will shine upon thy way. So Facebook family, I am done. I'm getting ready to go get something to eat right fast. So I just want to tell you, hey, come and see me. If you can't come and see me, go get the book on Amazon. You can get the paperback and you can get the Kindle edition. But I just want to tell you, be the miracle and be blessed. Thank you.